Welcome to the Q4 FY24 earnings conference call of Tata Consumer Products Limited, hosted by ICICI Securities. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode, and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Manoj Menon from ICICI Securities. Thank you and over to you, sir. Hi, everyone. Uh, as always, uh, it's our absolute pleasure at ICICI Securities to host the results conference call of uh, Tata Consumer Products. Uh, a wonderful good morning, good afternoon, good evening to you, depending on the part of the world you're joining from. Uh, now handing over the call to Nidhi Verma from the management for the introduction and for further proceedings. Thank you. Thank you, Manoj. Thanks for hosting us. Uh, welcome everyone to the Q4 and FY24 conference call for Tata Consumer. I am joined by uh, Mr. Sunil D'Souza, Managing Director and CEO, Mr. Ashish Goenka, Group CFO, and Mr. Ajit Krishnakumar, Executive Director and COO. I hope you have had the time to go through the materials that we put out yesterday. But as we usually do, we'll spend about 10 to 15 minutes going through the key performance highlights of the quarter and the year, and then open the floor for Q&A. Uh, I just want to draw your attention to the disclaimer statement, which is on your screens right now. With that, I will hand it over to Sunil. Thanks, Nidhi. Uh, so if I walk you through the executive summary, overall our top line was up by 9% in constant currency A8. India beverages flat volumes, but revenue grew 3. India foods continued a strong trajectory, including capital foods was up 20. If I exclude capital foods 11, like for like volume growth, and this is primarily driven by salt, was 4%. International business, 7% uh, revenue growth, 5% in constant currency. Most importantly, significantly improved profitability. During the year, <laughs> consolidated revenue up 10, 9% uh, in constant currency. India beverages volume up 2, revenue up 7. India foods uh, like for like is 15, uh, including acquisitions was 18, uh, with a 5% like for like volume growth. International business was up 9%, 5% in constant currency. Uh, the big uh, upside, a uh, uh, big bright spot for us is that the India growth businesses continued their strong trajectory, growing 40% in FY24, accounting for 18% of India business, up from 15 last year. We had a strong improvement in overall profitability, consolidated EBITDA growth of 24 and margin expansion 170 BIPs to 15.3. On an MAT basis, the India biz business saw marginal share loss. That said, quarter on quarter, we are seeing stability slash improvement. Salt shares are up to close to 40% right now. Just to recap, uh, when the merger happened, we were at a 30%. Uh, they improved by 50 BIPs on a MAT basis. Uh, innovation to sales ratio up from 3.4 to 5.1, I would say uh, towards the top quartile of the industry now. Front end and back end integration for capital foods was completed within 60 days. We had always set out a target of full integration in 100. We are on track for that. Transaction for Organic India closed on 16th April, which is this quarter, and therefore you will not see the numbers for uh, organic foods in the last quarter numbers. And again, the target for integration is also 100 days in the case of Organic India as well. Uh, we continued our good work on networking capital. The India core business is down to zero. Overall, as a company, we are down by eight days versus last year, down to 27 this year. Uh, India, including all the other businesses, uh, apart from tea and salt, we had a net working capital of four days. Uh, in terms of uh, performance uh, for the quarter, uh, I talked about uh, zero volume growth and 3% revenue for India uh, beverages. India foods, leaving out capital foods was four volume and 11 revenue. <laughs> Uh, including capital foods, and just as a perspective, capital foods was only February and March, was five volume and 20 revenue. Uh, U.S. coffee volume growth of six and uh, revenue growth of three. Uh, international tea broadly flat, minus 1% volume and 9% revenue growth. 
and non branded had a 4% uh, revenue growth overall 3927 crores growing 9% uh, for the full year uh, 15000 crores uh, growth across revenue growth across all segments excepting for us coffee where we have seen significant volatility in coffee prices and we moved our numbers up and down uh, on the shop floors as coffee prices have moved uh double digit uh, revenue growth of 10% in constant currency it is 9 uh in terms of group performance 9% revenue 22% ebitda before exceptionals pbt of 12 uh before exceptionals group net of 46 we had uh, exceptional items of 200 plus crores uh, this quarter because of which the reported group net profit is negative 27 we used a significant amount of cash for the acquisitions uh, in india and therefore net cash while we've been constantly showing you close to 3000 crores on the books is now down to 118 crores uh in terms of the full year 10% revenue 24% ebitda 24% pbt 29% group net and because of the exceptionals apart from this quarter about 200 if you remember we had some significant numbers last quarter primarily the uk pension numbers which uh, therefore the group net uh, reported is negative 8 uh against the strategic priorities uh, we have now we still almost there still not fully uh, there we are implementing a split route implementation in all million plus population towns and a significant amount of half a million plus population towns we are going with three routes just as a perspective broadly it is beverages plus organic it is salt plus sampan and uh, yum side and it is soulful plus uh, capital foods uh, we our significant gap on distribution was in the lower pop strata and we have had a huge focus on adding distributors in all 50000 plus towns we've added roughly 1300 distributors in the last year uh, in our urban markets and now we are focused on building a super stocker sub distributor network to reach less than 50000 population towns we are now at 1.6 million direct reach reaching 4 million outlets a uh, very strong performance in the what i call channels of tomorrow modern trade and e-commerce Uh, between the two they contribute to 25% of contribution now to our business we have had a significant number of new sku's on shelf soulful because it is available in modern trade has seen a significant growth of 65% and we have seen a significant improvement in our premium salt salience in e-commerce we just led lens credence to the fact that we now need to expand the distribution of this uh, portfolio uh india business overall uh, we continue to uh, add to brand building our anp spends were up 16% uh, versus fy23 uh salt market share was up by 50 bps overall i talked about the softness on uh, t market share negative 50 the only point i would like to make is uh, while overall nielsen does show a 7% uh, growth in the t business uh we strongly feel that we have not lost market share and therefore we would wait for competitive numbers to see where this pans out uh we have upped our innovation engine and effectively we've launched one launch every week of the year uh our innovation to sales ratio is now 5.1 as i mentioned it is uh, we are in the top quartile of the fmcg space in india at least Uh, and we have added uh, products across all the three big uh, verticals that we were looking at convenience health and wellness and premiumization uh, we've had a significant uh, step jump in digital transformation we are in the midst of uh, rolling out our new distributor management system and salesforce app uh, this is built on the salesforce platform it is not a out of the box solution and therefore a very very customized but very adaptable platform for us uh, to enable decision making at the front line apart from that we've digitized a significant por- portion of our back end including procurement and logistics uh, we had committed to simplify synergize and scale our businesses we finished the uh, merger of tata coffee during the quarter 1st of january was when it became effective Uh, we've announced the amalgamation of all our subsidiaries in india that will bring another round of synergies and simplification 
and uh, we have already on track on our international simplification and a part of that has already started flowing through into our P&L as uh, we walk you through it. Uh, growth businesses, we had said the target was 20% of our businesses growing at 30% and with the new acquisitions, uh, we are on track for 30% of our business growing at 30% in India. For the full year, we've delivered 40% growth from our growth businesses. Uh, we are walking the talk on sustainability. We've already put out our FY26 numbers out there and across all different items, uh, we are making progress. Now in four years of TCPL, effectively the India branded business has delivered a CAGR of 16, international 5, overall a 12% uh, revenue growth translating into a 15% EBITDA growth and a 27% group net profit. Uh, and we've unlocked efficiencies, our working capital is roughly half of where we started off. India has made significant progress, international will continue to make progress. EPS is up significantly from 5 to 12.3, a CAGR of 26%. Operating cash flow is now 101% of EBITDA and total shareholder return in the last four years is roughly 400%. In terms of the macros, tea costs broadly benign. Coffee, again, a bit of volatility with Robusta leading the charge, moving up and Arabica moving up in tandem. Uh, we need to stay very close to this, uh, especially for our U.S. business. In terms of business performance, uh, overall revenue for India packaged beverages up two. For the year, uh, we grew with 2% volume growth, revenue up three. A four-year CAGR of the beverage business is 9%. Uh, the significant part is now two-thirds of our portfolio is in the mass premium to premium segments. Uh, coffee grew strongly, 29% uh, growth for the year, accelerating to 45 for the quarter. Uh, important is also that we continued our leadership, uh, market leadership in the e-com channel. Uh, just another perspective, I think we have not alluded to it earlier. We have uh, incubated a vending business and now the vending business has crossed the 1000 machine milestone. India Foods, like for like, revenue growth of 11, volume growth of 4, and overall revenue growth of 20. Salt has hit a 40% market share. Uh, Tata Sampan uh, finished on a strong note with a 42% year-on-year growth in Q4. Uh, Soulful grew 42. Uh, Narishko had a slightly subdued quarter given the delayed onset of summer. Uh, just as a perspective, in many parts of the country, Summer is determined, the onset of summer is determined not by the temperature outside, but the onset of Holi. Holi was about 20 days late this year, and uh, we are seeing strong traction in the business now. Uh, so uh, overall, Narishko grew 13% uh, for the quarter with 204 crores of revenue. Uh, we had guided for uh, close to 900 to 1,000 crores of uh, top line for the year, but we ended up with 825. But we re remain bullish on the business because of two or three big regions. We have almost grown 50% in outlets last year. That will stand us in good stead. Innovation continues to be a strong engine there at a 20% innovation to sales ratio. And we have augmented capacity and distribution to prepare for the season in this year. Non-branded business, you will see a consolidation of the non-branded business into the TCPL P&L for this quarter. Uh, overall, plantations revenue was down, uh, but that is primarily because uh, we had a bit of uh, uh, how do I say, a pause in sales while we did name changes from uh, Tata Coffee to Tata Consumer. So auctions and overseas customers, uh, we had a bit of a hiccup. Therefore, there is an inventory sitting in uh, the businesses rather than getting translated into sales, which should get corrected very quickly. But soluble revenue grew uh, at 19% and revenue grew uh, 4 uh, Tata Starbucks, uh, while they had, I would say, a subdued quarter given the overall trends that we're seeing in the QSR business, uh, we saw uh, March better than February and uh, April better than March, so we see a, a better trend right now, but we remain focused on the larger India opportunity. We opened roughly 95 stores. Uh, we are in 61 cities. 
uh, revenue of 1200 crores targeting 1000 stores by FY28. Uh, our international business uh, was a star performer for this quarter. Uh, overall, UK revenue growth of 11. Uh, we are at a 20% market share in everyday black, and strategically, we needed to grow our market share in fruit and herbal. We are now at a 9%. UK delivered a very strong EBIT performance as well. The US uh, revenue growth was up to our market share in, is in the ballpark. Canada continues to be the star uh, with 9% revenue growth and a 28% overall market share. This quarter, uh, we've always maintained that the role of the international business is accretive EBIT margins compared to the overall business. And this quarter, the international has delivered to that level. <coughs> uh, I'll ask Ashish to walk you through the financials quickly. Thank you, Sunil. Uh, just turning to financials, uh, key highlights. Our standalone revenue grew at 13% for the quarter and consolidated revenue grew 9 Just to point out that standalone now includes our coffee soluble business and the base has been restated to that effect. Uh, EBITDA growth of 8% on standalone and 22% for the consolidated numbers. On a full year basis, uh, uh, standalone revenue growth was 11%, consolidated came in at 10%, EBITDA growth of 15% and 25% respectively. On consolidated financials, while you have seen the numbers and Sunil talked about it, I just want to point out on two specific items. One is exceptional items. Uh, they are largely attributed to stamp duty on the Tata coffee merger and provision on, on prudence taken on some of the underutilized assets across our entity and fair valuation losses on a, on a financial instrument as part of our annual review process. The other is on tax. Uh, as you would all know that we've been restructuring our, uh, you know, structure, corporate structure in the U.S. and bulk of it is now complete and therefore we have taken a one-time gain of close to 92 crores in the tax line and therefore the ETF for the quarter uh, looks uh, at a lower level. Uh, and with that, I think I would hand over uh, back to Nidhi for questions. Thank you. Thank you, Ashish. So we can now go to the Q and A queue now, and we'll take the questions from the webinar after that. Thank you very much, ma'am. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask questions may press star and one on their touchstone phone. If you wish to withdraw yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use only handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. Ladies and gentlemen, in order to ensure that the management will be able to address questions from all participants in the conference, please limit your questions to two per participant. Should you have a follow-up question, please see join the queue. Thank you. The first question is from the line of Abneesh Roy from Nuwama. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks and uh, congrats on uh, international margins and innovation. Uh, my first question is on Capital Foods and Organic India. I understand Organic India will be coming in FY25 numbers, but what do you to understand from inventory in the pipeline? Uh, how is it? Because initial part of the any m and we do see that inventory is there, higher uh, channel filling is there. So when I see your numbers uh, in in uh, first two months, uh, that leads to a 532 crore annual revenue versus uh, 705 crore revenue in FY23. In media interaction, you said for capital food, you expect double digit. So this double digit is for 705 crore of a number, or it's from a more uh, uh, FY24 kind of a run rate. So if you could give clarity on both capital foods and on organic India, how should we build in the FY25 numbers? Uh, so so let, let, let me take that. Uh, a, uh, you're absolutely right. When there is transitions, there are adjustments of inventory, etc. Because uh, remember, they had a multi-layered system. They had a set of uh, super stockists, sub-distributors, etc. Uh, so, Avnish, we've, uh, in the integration, we've flattened the structure. 
uh, integrated. So we've taken about 200 distributors from their side. The balance we've integrated with our systems. That's number one. Number two, we've reached to almost 95%. Uh, uh, 95 of our distributors have already built capital foods, and we are on our way. Uh, we are basing our numbers of growth on uh, the 705 to 750 sort of number, and we will work off that base. We are not working on the 500 odd base because we know it is uh, underpaid. Uh, we remain extremely confident of uh, our ability to drive the top line given what we are seeing on secondary sales, that's number one. Number two, what we are seeing the response to our uh, integration in the international markets as well. Uh, for example, in the US we moved from four distributors to 13 distributors because of their strong uh, 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 connections. A, B, I think the innovation pipeline is very strong and Ajay being there continued with us giving us the history and what he's seeing in the future of the business helps uh, actively. Uh, in addition, as I said, uh, the most important thing to drive at the front line is all our million plus and half a million, significant number of half a million plus uh, cities. We've got three, three salesmen at the front end now, with one salesman focusing ex uh, exclusively on capital foods and soul food, primarily because there is a lot of commonality in the product throughput A and B, the type of outlets that they will address. And this will apply even for Organic India, right, in terms of the growth number? Yeah, Organic India, uh, uh, we just finished in uh, on the 16th of April. We are still working through all the details. Uh, again, oh, there were only 24,000 outlets, so, I mean, there is a significant amount of uh, uh, headroom to grow out there. Uh, again, we will, re we will, we are targeting growth on the, I would I say, normalized run rates for these businesses had they continued alone, and it's not on the short-term adjustments that we will have to do. So my second and uh, last question is on uh, Narishko. So you have done exceedingly well past few years on Narishko. And uh, you have also given, I think, in the media interaction, a growth uh, expectation of around 30% in FI25. So I want to understand here, uh, what are the products or the brand, uh, sub-brands here which are doing really well? And in terms of distribution synergy, is it now largely done in terms of your total universe? So is, is a good penetration already there? Uh, and second related question is, uh, uh, first half, very strong growth in FI24, Q3 it slowed down and Q4 it slowed down significantly for the entire sector, I understand that. But is the size now becoming an issue? Because uh, FI23, 60% growth, FI24, second half, significant slowdown. Is size also an issue now, given the kind of growth you have seen earlier? So, so let me answer it in two, three ways. Abnish, I think size, we are far, far, far from where we will say that we've become sizable enough that growth rates will slow down. Both the category growth of packaged beverages in India as well as the opportunity for us to address that remains significant enough. The big brands in the portfolio which are growing are Tata Copper Plus and uh, uh, Tata Gluco Plus. Tata Copper Plus is seasonal, but not as seasonal as Tata Gluco Plus. And Tata Gluco Plus, which is the higher revenue, higher margin uh, product, is what did not fire as well as we thought it would because of the delayed onset of summer. In terms of the outlet base, we are now about 900, 950,000 outlets, which is a significant, uh, how do I say, we are significantly behind the rest of the competitors, the last competitors if you look at it. So we've got still a significant portion to run and we remain confident that we will continue to deliver these growth numbers. Uh, that we talked about. We, uh, till uh, January, we were very, very confident of hitting the 900 to 1000. Uh, Unfortunately, I would say second half of February, March was uh, a little bit of a dampener, but nothing has changed on the basics of the business, so we remain extremely confident. Sure, thanks. Uh, that's all for me. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Jay Doshi from Kotak. Please go ahead. Yeah. Hi, uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, first question is a bookkeeping question on uh, you know capital foods in organic India. What will be the aggregate amortization charge for both the entities and uh, depreciation as well? And what is uh, you know the ballpark EBITDA that you are uh, sort of uh, building for FI26? Uh, you know for the EPS neutral math. So Jay, in terms of uh, capital foods, it's going to be around 160 crores for a year. Organic India, we've just closed, as Sunil said, on 16th of April, and we're still working through the financials and PPA. I think we'll be able to convey that number later. 
for on forward uh, looking a bit there, i think i will refrain from giving a guidance at this stage but essentially what you have said is uh, both these businesses uh, will be cash accretive uh, right from this year and uh, eps overall uh, accounting accretive uh, starting next year uh, fi26 uh, will it be uh, eps accretive or eps neutral and is this after factoring in amortization charges so after factoring in amortization uh, charges j the way we have built the business case and if we deliver on that then of course by year 3 we are likely to become overall accretive all right f527 yeah f527 correct uh, uh thank uh, thanks and a uh, couple of more questions around uh, profitability first of all thanks for the disclosures on uh, you know uh, profitability movement for different businesses now from next year perspective what is the outlook on profitability for the international business and i'm talking about the branded international branded business we understand the volatility non branded and second is uh, what about the synergies uh, for tata coffee uh, at the time of you know a consolidation merger announcement you are indicated some uh, cost savings and other synergies so are you still on track or expecting those to materialize and if you could quantify for that for us again uh so uh, let me let me take that question a uh, we had we had always maintained that the international ebit margins should be accretive to the total india portfolio and starting this quarter given the uk uh, turn, strong turn around i would say a and b the continued delivery of canada and the improvement in the us us we still got work to do uh, we expect uh, international to continue to be accretive on ebit margins uh, going forward a we overall as a company i think we've said uh, ebitda margins we've delivered 15.3 uh, uh, for whole of last year last quarter was 16.1 but we will be uh, improving off the 15.3 number as we uh, go forward and uh, sorry on the tata coffee merger uh, yes uh, we have started realizing the synergies the integrated uh, organization has already uh, got announced and therefore from a cost perspectives we have seen the synergies coming in in terms of revenue synergies early signs there were top line synergies as well as we put both the teams together uh, complementary geographies complementary products uh, coming together uh, we have started seeing early signs of those synergies uh, coming in and do we do expect to deliver on those commitments uh, thank you so much uh, i'll get back in the queue thanks a lot mm-hmm. and good luck for fi25 thank you the next question is from the line of mihir from nomura please go ahead hi so good morning thank you for taking my question um uh, uh, so my first question is on the tea business on the tea volumes how should one uh, think about the tea volumes uh, for the coming year in fourth quarter volumes became flat mm-hmm. no sooner the base volumes came back to positive trajectory uh, you know and that trend will continue so can volumes in uh, tea business language in fi25 uh, or steps are being taken uh, you know to curtail uh, market share losses uh, so a i'll react first to the market share question as i mentioned uh, we don't expect that the industry grew by 7% last quarter as reported by nielsen and therefore we would wait for competitive data to come out before making a judgment on that that's number 1 number 2 long term we do expect the india tea business volumes to be about a 5% growth and a couple of points on that uh, on our price mix uh, and uh, uh, revenue growth management uh, numbers uh yes this quarter was a bit soft compared to uh, what we were seeing as a trend because we had seen volumes coming to a 2 to 3% volume growth uh we do expect to see uh, at least a 3 per 2 to 4% uh, growth volume growth numbers at least in the short term but in the medium to long term we do expect tea to come back to a mid single digit uh, volume growth understood sir so my second question is on uh, the coffee soluble business uh, what is the steady state margin you know for this business and given this 22 odd percent margins is driven by price increases um, can these margins sustain for some more quarters till it gets annualized or how should one look at the margins for the, the uh, this business uh, at least for the coming uh, few quarters of the for the year so again uh, i would separate out the non branded margins into two different pieces there is a coffee solubles and there is a plantation uh, business 
coffee solubles is a pass through uh, largely a pass through number uh, and th there might be differences in margins be between timing of uh, buying of inventory and selling of inventory because remember we are buying coffee from various parts of the world converting it to extracts or solubles and selling it onwards so so there is a input price also differential whereas in the plantations we get the upside of the entire coffee uh, pricing going up it will remain volatile for some time we had seen a, a, a sort of a plateauing of that over the past three quarters but in q4 again we've seen robusta starting to jump up and in tandem then arabica jumping up uh, we would say we would expect volatility at least in the short term on this piece but we will have to manage the numbers now just as a perspective overall the non branded business is just about 10% of our uh, total india revenue so from that perspective it is not as significant uh, but we would expect some road bumps at least in the short term thank you sir we we'll take the next question from the line of sheila rathi from morgan stanley please go ahead yeah thanks for taking my question uh, my first question again was on coffee business so sunil if you would like to call out you know what kind of uh, distribution innovation plan uh, we have uh, with respect to you know taking up our coffee uh, branded business higher from where we are today so uh, let me say we've got significant uh, uh, opportunity out there uh, i'll i'll point back to one of the reasons why now we have done a split route at the front end is primarily because that was becoming the blockage for us to expand our portfolio and expand different skus a coffee did grow 29% for a year and 45% for the quarter but i think we are still scratching the surface we've still got a significant amount of uh, runway out there this year that remains a focus especially with the a the innovations that we have planned b the amount of media spend that we are putting behind it and c between the enabling infrastructure that has been put into place and what kind of distribution the coffee business would have currently versus crt business and if there is any difference here uh, in terms of b2b or b2c strategy so it's primarily a b2c strategy we are significantly behind <coughs> i i think we've got still way to go in the southern markets is where we had initially focused there the gaps are they still large but relatively smaller compared to the rest of the country uh, we've still got uh, we are we are not there by a mile thank you sir we'll take the next question from the line of parsi pantaki from iifl securities please go ahead uh hi sir so in the stand alone we have seen uh, some kind of a margin contraction this time i believe it's because of a uh, 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 higher ad spend uh, which is purely a phasing issue so can you just try and quantify that for us uh, what is the increase in uh, ad spend on a yoi basis as a percentage of uh, sales so that we can get a better idea of the underlying uh, profit growth for the stand alone business thanks So, firstly, hi. Thanks for the question. Is uh, we have stepped up our AMC as Sunil mentioned earlier. It's almost a hundred basis point increase over last year. So, I think that's one reason uh, for a bit of uh, you know underlying uh, numbers on the bit down stand alone. The second, of course, is uh, the capital foods, uh, which has a marginal impact. Uh, but as the full synergy benefit comes through, we will see this improve. But capital foods is not in the standalone. No, it's in the subsidiary, right? Part of it is in uh, the standalone as well. But I think bulk of it is attributed to the AMP increase. This is almost 35% growth versus last year, as I said, 100 basis point increase. Understood. Understood. Secondly, just wanted to understand on Narishko, what is the total distribution reach that you have right now, and how does that compare to the universe? Uh, so the total distribution reach last year was about 650,000 outlets, which we improved to 950,000 this year. Uh, so that's about a 50% increase. But I would say we probably index. If I take an index to what the universe uh, is there, we are probably at a, maybe a 15-20% of the universe. Possibly long way to go. 
understood understood and uh, uh, you are growing so rapidly so are you really just taking market share from the very small unorganized tail brands or uh, is it also some amount of market share gain from uh, the larger brands in the, the package drinking water space so our portfolio is completely different from the big boys right i would say in the package drinking water which is tata copper plus and i'm just taking a there'll be a significant amount of market share that we would be taking from other players as well as taking off from organized players but the larger unorganized players sorry but the larger portion i would say is probably coming in from the uh, branded players right now we are the number 5 water brand uh, now in india uh tata gluco plus is a cup which is a completely differentiated format i'm not sure uh, we are taking away from the big boys there is enough uh, uh, category expansion out there given per capita consumption uh, that we are driving for and tata gluco plus would be approximately what percentage of your narishko turnover it would roughly be about 40% of uh, the total narishko turnover 60% would be tata copper plus Okay, sir. Okay, that's all for me. Thanks and all the best. Thank you. A reminder to all the participants to kindly limit their questions to two per participant. We'll take the next question from the line of Arnab Mitra from Goldman Sachs. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, my first question again was on the international margins. So, so we've seen a big step up in the fourth quarter compared to even the last two quarters. was there anything specific this quarter which additionally led to a margin expansion or this is the full benefit of the changes you've done and a related question is this coffee inflation last time did hurt your us margins uh, do you anticipate any pressure given the current trend from the coffee prices so so let me let me answer your second question first i think last time around we were uh, what's the right term we were a bit slow on the reaction because we had not expected the pricing to move as fast as it did when coffee prices came down and uh, our reaction time on the shop floor and converting it into promotions was a bit slower than competitors and therefore it was a double whammy i mean volumes were soft and uh, uh, we did not get the throughputs this time around we've been very agile because we saw, saw this coming slightly early in the day and therefore we moved in line with coffee prices so i would not while absolutes might move up and down uh, because of the softness on the total top line uh, with the price increases that we are now seeing uh, coming in back into the market uh, margin terms i don't think uh, there will be too much of an impact if anything we should expect an improvement that's number 1 uh, what what was the first question sorry it was the 15 the margin itself ah, okay so 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 uh, on the international business couple of things we had kicked off our international restructuring last year in the same quarter right so this year we are seeing the full benefits of the entire and when i am talking of restructuring it's not the, not the legal entities restructuring the cost restructuring in the international business so we are seeing the full benefits of that flowing in that number 1 number 2 last year about this time was when we started uh how do i say our revamping our entire uh product slash brand proposition in especially in the uk uh where we put in 10% assance into the tea brought it up to par changed our entire packaging make it made it sustainable changed our execution dynamics uh, and uh, went for proper distribution execution in a heightened manner uh, we are seeing the benefits of all that flow in plus because now we've got a st- stronger proposition in the market we have also started to take price increases to put us on par and not at a discount to all the competitors in the market we have taken some pricing again this year and we are seeing uh, uh, our maintaining of market share despite all the pricing that they have taken that's number 1 number 2 is uh, also uh, remember the fruit and herbal and specialties are a the growing parts of the market also the better margin parts of the market that part of the portfolio is also getting ramped up between good earth and tea pigs we are now up to a 10% share in the uk so all multiple pieces flowing in uh, we do expect to see uh, as i said the international margins uh, right now are about 200 to 300 bips better than uh, our india businesses overall businesses we do expect to see that accretiveness to continue 
sure uh, sunil my last question was on salt so uh, you know you you had a huge margin ex- uh, market share expansion uh, and now from here on is the pace of expansion going to be lot more modest given that the distribution leg has already played in and given that the category itself doesn't grow much uh, does it mean we should expect less than mid single digit volume growth now in salt going ahead so so let me put it this way if i rewind about 18 18 20 months back was when we took our significant price increases which was roughly around 30% at that point of time our value market or overall market share was primarily driven by value and not by volume because we put our margins on track and uh, uh, continue to execute right now our uh, growth is driven by volume and not as much volume because we have not taken pricing at least for the last i think uh, 15 to 18 months if i'm not mistaken so right now it is a pure distribution expansion uh, portfolio expansion now value added salt are now 9% of my portfolio versus when we started with the merger four years back it was about a less than a percent out there so value added salt volume growth distribution expansion you would have seen the recent ipl opening day uh, tata namak advertisements we putting salience uh, behind it so we remain confident of continued growth in market share i do not see a, a reason for us to slow it down significantly thanks so much all the best thank you we'll take the next question from rohan kale from incred capital please go ahead uh yeah thanks sir for the opportunity uh, just wanted to uh, check on the non non-brand, non branded uh, business margins uh, so i'm assuming you've got uh, strong gains uh, on lower price inventory of coffee so just want to understand how much of this inventory do we have left uh, assuming now you would be procuring at uh, current market prices how should we look at these margins here sustainably at least in the near term and uh, second question on uh the asset write downs that i mentioned in the exception item just want to understand what the uh, rupees 620 million uh, asset write down was uh so so let me take the first one and i ask ashish to take the second piece uh like i said the unbranded business is in two pieces there is a largely a flow through with a delayed uh, impact of either up or down on uh, coffee prices uh in the solubles business because we buy coffee convert it into solubles slash extractions and they then sell it off uh on the coffee plantations there is a straight uh, uh, revenue uplift which increases margin right now uh, we are seeing prices going up and therefore uh, there is a uh, benefit for the coffee plantations more than solubles on the solubles business we do not expect too much movement because of uh, prices going up and down ashish yeah on the second bit uh, as i was explaining earlier this is largely as part of the annual review process where we look at all assets and uh, across various parts of business looking at the capacity utilization uh, on a more prudent basis we have taken provision on some of these assets on this sir thank you i'll get back to you thank, thank you. you thank you sir Ladies and gentlemen, I would request uh, Ms. Nidhi Verma to kindly proceed with the next question on the webcast. Over to you, ma'am. Sure. Thank you. Uh, so there are a few questions on the webcast link. Yeah, more than twenty parties in the conference. Okay. I'll just read those questions out. Uh, the first question is from Kajol. She is asking, "Can you please provide some more light on the subdued performance of Starbucks during the quarter?" And uh, yeah, we've already talked. Yes, we've already answered that during the opening remarks, Kajol. There is another question from Nikhil. How long will it take for it to complete the integration of acquisitions? and when can we expect margin expansion based on these acquisitions yeah so we've always on this guided for 100 day integration we remain on track for uh, so capital foods we acquired uh, february 1st uh, so by april end we will uh, complete the acquisition like i said 95% of our front end distributors are already billing capital foods and we are on our way so Uh, we will complete capital goods in 100 days organic india was 16th april we will complete it in 100 days and post that you will start to see margin expansion coming in yeah thank you there is a question from keshav he is asking is there any update on the rice issue and any timeline 
So, Kesha, we are on track on the rights issue. At, uh, the process is on, and I think we should be able to conclude it by early quarter two. Thank you, Ashish. Uh, there is a question from Jigar. He's asking, what is the reason of profit decline even though revenue has grown? So, I think this has been explained enough, Jigar. Uh, it's uh, led by exceptional charges. Net of that, the profit has actually grown 42% as you've seen. Uh, there is a question from Summer. He's asking, can you give some color of the business of Starbucks again in terms of its revenue and earnings to overall business? So, just I think you're asking about the accounting treatment. It's shared. So, so, uh, Starbucks is not accounted for in our consolidated. We consolidate it as uh, part of associates and JVs. Uh, 1200 plus crores of uh, top line, which has grown at 7% uh, for the quarter. Yeah, I think uh, that's pretty much take from the webcast. Uh, oh, oh, I am asking if there are any plans on entering the BPC segment. Uh, so, like I said, uh, we've always said that we want to be a total FMCG company. Right now, we're focused on being a food and beverage company. I think we've shown our intent very clearly to grow organically and inorganically. We do think there is still a runway left there. Once we think we've exhausted the runway out here and we see a bigger opportunity in moving beyond food and beverage, we will definitely look at that. Okay, and I think there is another housekeeping question from Nida. She's asking, is the decline in India business EBIT margin, like what is leading to that? Uh, why is it declining from 15.5% to 12.9%? That's his question. It is led by the amortization charge. Here. Yeah. Amortization of capital foods. Yeah. Okay, and there is one question uh, asking what could be the growth strategy for Tata Sampan moving forward. So Tata Sampan, we very clearly said that we want to be a total pantry brand. We've identified very clearly the categories that we want to play in Tata Sampan. Uh, right now, we are in pulses, spices, uh, and a variety of other pantry products. Uh, as we gain scale uh, and improve both our brand strength and therefore pricing power and our back-end procurement, we continue to improve margins on Sampan. Uh, there is a question from Sachin asking, when you say growth businesses will be 30% of consolidated revenue, does it also include capital foods and organic India? Yes, uh, we have, we said before we did this integration, uh, we did this acquisitions, we had said uh, we expect uh, growth businesses to account for 20% of our top line and growing at 30%. Uh, just as I was saying last quarter, we grew at uh, 18. Uh, Going forward with Capital India, Capital Foods and Organic India, we expect growth businesses in India to be 30% of our portfolio growing at uh, 30%. Thank you. Thank you, Sunil. I think we've covered most of the questions, actually all of the questions from the webcast now. Um, so yeah, with that, I think uh, there are no further questions in the Q&A queue as well. Uh, I would just like to take this opportunity to thank you all for joining the call. If you do have any remaining questions, please feel free to get in touch with us. Thank you. Thank you very much, ma'am. Thank you, members of the management. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of ICICI Securities, that concludes this conference. We thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines. Thank you.